Hey, welcome back to Revamped Outdoors. It's finally July, and you know what that means. It's hashtag soft plastic July. I had done some of these on the channel a while ago, and uh, lately been slacking off a little bit, doing uh, other projects other than fishing lures, so I think we're going to dedicate the whole month of July to making soft plastic baits with a 3D printer. So if that's something you're interested in, stick around. We're going to do it to it today. We're going to design something in Fusion 360 that we think may catch fish. Probably won't, but, you know, for every one good idea, there's 900 bad ones. So I'm full of that 900. So be sure to watch. Uh, but we'll do an idea that we think maybe uh, we'll catch fish. We'll design it in Fusion 360. We'll print it off on a 3D printer. And then we'll cast it in silicone. And then we'll shoot it in plastisol, so we'll actually use an injection mold design that we actually make in Fusion 360 to make an actual bait that will probably not catch fish. So, we'll see. Stick around. Who knows? Maybe I'll actually go fishing and we'll actually catch fish. Problem is, uh, you know, I just don't have a whole lot of free time, and I can't really get out there to do a whole lot of fishing, and I don't have a good way to bring you guys with me while I fish. So I'm still trying to figure that out. I'm printing out some camera mounts for the boat. So hopefully it becomes a little bit more entertaining content to actually get out on the boat with, but we'll see. So I think for this first one, we're going to do a pan fish. Uh, pan fishing is like bluegills, sunfish, perch, that kind of thing. Usually much smaller baits. A lot of people refer to these as micro baits. Uh, I don't really agree with the whole micro thing. They're, they're small, but they're not tiny. Uh, and I think you can use those in like spring, summer, uh, probably pretty good for ice fishing. So we'll try and design that. I had designed this up previously. I have everything poured already and I've already injected some of these, but I thought I'd take a model at least for this first one in our independence month here in the United States. I'll take this first one as a, uh, kind of a get started, show you what I did. Cause I know it actually works. And then here through July, if you guys have any suggestions, put them down in the comments and we'll make a bait uh, based loosely on those comments and we'll try and make a silicone mold of it and we'll try and inject it and catch fish with it. This episode, I won't be doing any fishing. I'll just show you basically the Fusion 360 process that I use to create the mold. Hopefully you enjoy it. Uh, let's jump into Fusion 360 right now. I'll show you what I ended up with. So this is what I have so far. Um, this is a 20 version mold of this lure. So there's 10 on each side. I'm calling this the flat grub because it's essentially a grub with a flat tail on the back. This is commonly referred to as the tree here in the middle. This is where the plastisol comes down and then it enters into each one of these chambers that gets pushed out to the side. This is just a sprue hole, pushes the air out so the actual lure itself doesn't have any air pockets or holes or anything like that. Uh, doesn't mean it always works. A lot of the time it doesn't work, but uh, so far this mold's been holding up, so I think it's a good one to start out with. First, what I'm going to say here is that I don't break this down in components. I know people are going to be up in arms about that. Um, I make these so quickly that I don't really find a need to have them in specific components. I just use bodies. They're not that complex. Uh, if I was going to bring in a model of a complex lure itself, I may break that into components and then bring it into a separate project. But for right now, just here in Fusion 360, if I have an idea in my head, usually I'll sketch it out, make that lure really quick, and then I'm just putting it into a mold straight away. So I don't really break it down into components or any separate groups or anything. There's nothing wrong with that. You can do that. It's plenty fine. I just don't do it because uh, usually I'm impatient and usually I just want to print these as quick as possible. So that's where I'm at. Also, this injector nozzle. So the injector pushes in the plastisol from the top. It's a uh, hot plastic. You heat it up to a certain point, at which point that heat activates it. So when it cools down, it turns into like a rubber instead of a liquid. A rubber plastic that injector portion I had as an STL I didn't model it from scratch so when I brought it in I had to not capture design history because I brought a mesh into the model workspace 
so I don't have the design history bar down here at the bottom and all that, and that's the reason why I had to not capture design history. For something like this, I'm not too concerned with that because I'm just trying it. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I redesign it from scratch. So anyway, here we go. Basically, what we end up we end up with here is a top and a bottom, and I'll show you the steps to get to the top and bottom. These are actually negative what would they be? They'd be positive mold boxes for a negative injection mold. So what we're doing is essentially we're just going to design this lure. We create that design. We create the mold, the tree structure that we want, and then we cut it in half and make a mold. So basically what I'm going to do here is just go through what I did really quickly and uh, we'll go from there. This is probably going to be all over the place but I'll try my best. So basically, the lure itself is just going to be this sketch, right? Let's see if I can bring this in. It's just going to be this very simple sketch. So all I'm doing is starting a sketch from the top down. I'm going to edit the sketch so you can see what I did. I'm just starting a sketch, <coughs> excuse me, I'm just starting a sketch from the top down. I'm getting an idea in my head of what I wanted. So I wanted it to look like this in the end, right? So in my brain, my thought patterns, a bunch of beers later, you think about how am I going to do that? So all I did for this was every two millimeters or so, I added in an, an arc that was the same across this. I boxed it out so then I could do a revolve on this. So we can do that right now. Uh, so I can do a revolve here, create revolve on this axis. See, now we got. We'll do a new body. So now we have uh, this essentially grubby-looking pattern, and then I just wanted a flat tail back here. So I'm just going to press and pull this out symmetrically. Let's just give it like 0.8 on each side. So that means it's 1.6 thick. You could do like a 0.5 here because it is a smaller bait. So now we have essentially the profile of the flat grub. Now to connect these two, all I'm going to do is do a loft. That's under create loft. That's going to kind of smooth these two out for me and connect them. And that's basically the gist of everything to do with this. It's not that hard. Then you come in here and you do your fillets and and this that and the other thing to make it look nice do these three so then you can move these in and out right you're bringing that fillet up on that intersection and you can see the difference between this connecting point and this between each segment so that's all you're doing you're going around you're making it look the way you want to and then once you have it there it's a very simple process from getting it to that spot to this spot so I'm just adding in right here for instance I would come up here I do uh, another sketch I would just add in a line here like this I want to sprue hole out this back so I'm just gonna create off of that just a pipe and I'm gonna make it like 0.8 so it's real thin I'm gonna join to this body so now I have my sprue hole See, and then you just, you're basically coming back through and you're creating, you're either creating new sketches or you're messing around with it to make this work the way you're thinking in your head. I can't do that for you because half the time my head's all backwards. So that's going to have to be on you for what you want to design and how you want to do it. But it's, these are just a series of lines and pipes. So you come up here, create pipe, same principle that we just did there for a sprue hole. Then all you're doing is you're just copying this body. So I'm just going to do a control V. I'm going to set it like maybe 10 millimeters down. That looks good to me. It's got enough gap. I'm going to say, okay, then you can do this number, right? And then you just start to build it. How big do you want? How many do you want in each one? And you just keep going and going and going and going. You know, nothing crazy. 
Now, the tricky part is, is once we have our mold, we need to have two sides of this mold. So we need to eventually pour silicone into these and then have them meet together. So what we're gonna do is once we have something that we want, so let's say we have our tree all the way around this, now what we have to do is we have to come in here on the side. So I'm gonna go to the front profile, which for this would be the side. I'm gonna create a new sketch. And I'm just gonna run this line through it. It's just a line, nothing special. I'm going to stop my sketch, I'm going to go in here, I'm going to select, and then what I'm going to do is modify split body, I'm going to select this body to split, and you'll see that it goes through it on the front. I'm going to say OK, so that means it splits this body up into two halves, right on the X plane. So now we have it into two halves, and that allows us to create a top and a bottom. So that's where these molds are coming from right so that's just a half of the lure right there is just a half of the lure and then this is the other half of the lure so if this was a more complex lure there'd be a different top and bottom section to it um, but because it's symmetrical all the way around in 360 degrees when we split it in half it's just two halves technically you could get away with just pouring two halves of this mold if you didn't want to use index markers um, if you didn't need to index the two halves together you could just do one mold uh, print the same STL and do the other I like to put index markers in and those are these round holes here you can see this one's an indented hole and this is an, you know it's a proud of the surface so these two uh, meet together when the mold's put together. So you'll be able to see that uh, when we go into the pouring aspect. But these are very simple as well. It's essentially just a circle. If your printer's very high resolution, what you can do is actually indent the circle inside of the other. So if I get into the sketch, you'll see that one of these circles is five millimeters diameter and the other is 4.8 millimeter diameter that's just because we want to have one circle be inset and that's going to mean that our silicone mold when we pour it is actually proud of the surface because that silicone is going to go into the cavity and then we want one that's proud of the 3d printed surface and that means the silicone is actually going to be indented so it's we're just doing the opposite of how we want our silicone mold to come out we're just doing that in the 3D printed space. So in these videos, I'm gonna go through this a little bit slower. This is probably gonna be a longer video because I wanna set the framework for how we're gonna proceed from here on out because there's quite a few of these that get a little bit more complex. So if we just get the basic idea and understanding of how we're gonna make the mold, I think we'll be better off in the future instead of me doing, you know, each video is gonna be 20 to 30 minutes. So if I explain this one, I think in detail, I think we'll be, better off a little bit if your printer is not exactly the highest resolution like mine's not the best you don't necessarily need to do this 4.8 and the 5 you can just set these to 5 millimeters and do two of each and that's completely fine because what you're doing is your printer is actually going to make this uh, 5 millimeter proud of the surface and 5 millimeter cavity so Either way, you're getting a little bit of extra material on either side. So you don't need to inherently design that offset into it because the material is building up and taking away. So there ends up being enough play without having to make a smaller and a larger hole. But uh, if you're a little bit worried about it and you want to make sure that your index locations work, this is always a good option is to offset uh, the size of each hole. So what we're doing then, after we have these in here, before we create the larger portion, is I'm just doing revolves on both of these. So I'll come in here, do a revolve, pick the axis I want it to revolve around. So then this is just going to be like a small sphere, right? 
Then I turn that off. I turn my sketch back on that I can't remember which one it was. Naturally. Why would I? There we go. So then I have a small sphere. Then I come back in here. I'm going to do a modify. I'm going to do a, re oh, I mean, a create revolve along this axis. Let's say new body. This is going to be a large sphere. So then I come back uh, to the greater sketch that I've orientated these because I have it in my, we have our bodies already situated. So they're already here. So I know that I can put an index location right there, right there. I know that won't interfere with my mold after I pour it. I know that won't interfere with all of these, these lure bodies in here. So what I can do then is all I'm going to do is uh, I'm looking at the sketch and then I'm just going to, you know, I'm moving those to those locations. I'm just saying, okay, those are in there. I'm just copying them. So then you can copy them all the way down. You can copy them all the way across. And then what you can do is once you have your body set up, so let's just use these two as an example. I'll put the small sphere in. I'll copy that over as well. I want to get that perfectly on there. There we go. It's perfectly in the center. Point to point movement. That's uh, one of my favorite parts about Fusion 360. You don't have to worry about lining things up. So we can do that to the large sphere as well. Sometimes it helps us to get it out of the way so Fusion doesn't get confused on what points you're at. Okay, so let's say we wanted this, just this one or something, right? So we have our mold cavity set up. I'm gonna, I know I want a three millimeter perimeter. So I'm just gonna go around this by three millimeters. So I know I want a three millimeter perimeter. Now we come in to see our body. That one is split in half. That's what we want. So I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to grab this just with a press pull. You can do whatever. Four millimeters sounds good. There we go. Now we have this body uh, joined because I did a join operation. Then we have the small spheres. The two small spheres. What I'm going to do with these, I'm actually going to cut them out. So I'm going to do a modify combine. I'm going to grab this bottom part of the mold. I'm going to do a cut, not a join. And I'm going to grab these two. So I cut those out. So now this is going to be considered, I guess it would be like the top of my mold. So I can bring this up. We'll do that like 15. Now we have all that combined into one thing. So that's our mold, right? So that's going to be our cutout mold. We'll just call that like cutout mold just for the sake of ease of understanding it. So that's the cutout mold. I'm going to take that away. Now we still have everything together the same exact way. Nothing's moved. And we can do that for the dimpled side of the mold, right? So now we just flip it over, and this is the other half of the lure. What I can do is come in here. I can press pull this down to four, like we did our other one. I can say join. It'll join this top of the body there. Then we can bring this up with a press pull for 15, like we did the other one. Say OK. Now we have our two large spheres here. We're not going to cut those out. We're actually going to leave those in so they leave a cavity into the silicone. So I'm going to bring that, all three of these together with a combine. I'm not going to do a cut this time. I'm going to do a join. So now we have, let's say, dimpled mold. There we go. That'll work. So now the only problem we have is if we turn both these on, they're facing each other, right? 
So what I have to do is figure out which one I want to move, and it's probably going to be this one because it's on the bottom, not the top. So I'm just going to slide this over here. I'm going to flip it 180. Then I'm going to turn my other one down. I look, I have up here at the top, so I know this is the top of my workspace. I'm going to turn these sketches off. So now I have the cutout right there. I'm going to move this with the drag function. Then I'm going to come over here to point to point. I'm going to use point to point because you got to love point to point. I'm going to go to here and to here. Then I'm going to come back to the free move and I'm going to bring that out. So now that'll set up itself, right? So now we have the same mold essentially that we can pour silicone in, except the one's going to be indexed and it's going to be the bottom half of the lure, and one's going to be indexed and it's going to be the top half of the lure. And this is essentially how you end up with these two bodies doing the same thing. The only difference being that you're just going through a little bit more carefully. You're thinking about where that air needs to escape if you're plunging in an injection. So that plastic's coming down through here. It needs to push, it needs to displace that air away somewhere. And we need to give the mold the ability to evacuate that air. The other thing to note is your injector, depending on the size of the nozzle, it might have to change geometry up here. They're mostly standardized. It helps uh, the industry out that way. So now we have to print that off. Uh, you can just, you know, save these as an STL like you would any other file in Fusion 360. Save those as an STL, print them off on your favorite printer or your not favorite printer or the printer you want to throw out the window or the printer that's been broken in my basement for four months, you know. Print it on whatever you have. It's just, it's, you got to print, you know, if you want to print it with a 3D pen, go ahead, but it's going to take a while. And it's not very accurate, but it's, it's your mold, you know. So there's a few things to consider while you're doing this, uh, setting it up for printing too. And I guess we'll jump into Simplify 3D and I'll show you that real quick. So we're in Simplify 3D now. I found that you want the highest resolution you can, right? Because we're going to put this into silicone then eventually inject it. The less layer lines, technically the better, unless that's a look that you're going for. Sometimes you could use a bait that looks kind of like it has scales or kind of ribbed or something like that. I normally, I'm not a finisher. I'm not a 3D printer. 3d print finisher i just don't do it i can't do it i don't have the patience for it i'm not going to sit there and sand something for eight hours and then uh, put a automotive primer on it and then paint it even on some of my more like fun videos where i did like the fossil skull and stuff all i did was just paint it because <laughs> to me it's already amazing enough that we can spit out hot glue like this right it's obviously it's not hot glue it's 3D printer filament, but you know what I'm saying. So what I've figured out so far by doing this for a little while, I'm no expert on this by any means, but what I've figured out so far is the higher resolution, the better. The problem is with the higher the resolution on FDM printers, the longer it's going to take you to print, right? So what I've kind of figured out to do with this is I've done variable settings on this. So I'll go in here and I'll look through kind of where the bottom of that mold starts. And I'm gonna take a few layers above where that starts. And the reason for that is I want my finished layer on the bottom to be 0.2 layer height, because it gives a little bit more thicker plastic. It can run a little bit quicker. So I want that base to actually be 0.2 layers. And then as it comes up the bait, I'm gonna switch that to what my printer can handle, which is 0.08. Uh, layer height so a 0.1 layer height so I'm going to add this location in there I'm going to come up again and here we're done with the injection portion so I'm going to go add location there so now I have a split process and I'm not sure how you can do this with other printer softwares you may be able to do it uh, on like Cura and stuff I'm not versed in that I have Simplify 3D I bought it a long time ago so that's what I use obviously you can do just as well if not better on other printer softwares but this is just my process so you can see here with this process in the middle this is a 4.84 and then 13.31 that's where it's going to switch to a different process in that gap so it's 
only the lure is going to be printing in point one layer height and that seems to help out quite a bit with saving time on the print and also making the print look a lot better so what i'm going to do in here then is i'm going to switch this over from whatever profile i was using to uh, a new profile i'm going to remember what these were 484 1331 I'm gonna say no, 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 whatever. So 14, four, 14, eight, or four, eight, four, and something. <laughs> I forgot already. 13, four, one, whatever. You get the point. Write it down if you need to. And 331. Three, one. So I have to go back in here. Change this to 331, 1331 because it was freaking out. So then I go to prepared print. I want all these to run at once. It'll throw an error if there's a problem. There wasn't a problem this time around. So it's going to go through, and you can actually see that on this uh, print preview right here. You can see where it switches from 0.2 layers to one, uh, 0.1 layer height with this kind of represented in this blue right here and then that's just going to give us higher detail it's going to reduce our print time this says 24 hours but that's because both of these pro these processes processes were at uh 100 infill infill i don't for me printing this 10 percent seems to be fine 10 percent three perimeters seems to do just fine haven't had a problem with it uh, doing that. You get a little leak through with the silicone unless your printer is very, very tight. If it is, then you're good to go. If not, it doesn't matter. The silicone rips off. The best part about that then is then the next time you use that mold, you pour that silicone to make another mold out of these boxes. You actually get, it's even better and better because that silicone uh, is full in the nooks and crannies so the next time it goes again it's going to be better and better and better and better so there's no real downfall with doing uh any different types of settings it just may take you a couple times to do a mold these are larger molds too you don't necessarily have to make huge ones you can make smaller ones and that's just perfectly fine so this is much better we're at about 18 hours for both halves so within a day you can have this printed out ready to pour and then you can pour it and have an injection mold for two piece so uh yeah hopefully you enjoyed the video there uh, this is just a little bit of how i use fusion 360 to make the mold for the soft plastic i think what i'll do is i'll try and divide this into a couple different uh videos because i think just recording this right now i'm already at 35 minutes and it's going to be hard for me to cut down anything in fusion 360 so i think this will be the first part of just what does it look like in fusion 360 how do we get those molds to be the way they are and set up the way they are easily quickly efficiently to where we're not just freaking out trying to uh, make different molds of different things and all that so i think this was a good start to it it gives a pretty good rundown these first couple videos will be longer but then i think we'll we'll bring it down into concise each lure will have a it have the design print and everything in one so hopefully you enjoyed this hopefully you learned a little bit of something i'm no expert on this i just really love making soft plastic baits with the 3d printer and i hope you learned a little bit and i hope you're doing this too remember uh if you're injecting or pouring soft plastic you're getting it really hot so be wary of that it can burn you so just be careful uh wear gloves uh, so my protection it's always a good idea and a smile it helps quite a bit too uh, if you did like the video or if you know anybody that might uh, benefit from it please consider sharing it because YouTube doesn't care about anybody with under a million subscribers and till the next one keep your amps up and your filament dry